Oh, and we're live. We're live. It's another episode of whatever this is. I think it's just my channel and you're here. I've got the wonderful Claire Headley yet again. She's back on the show. Make sure whatever you do, whatever you're doing in your lives, stop and go and subscribe to Blown for Good. Blown for Good means you've left Scientology for good that Claire and Mark Headley run. They're two of my favorite people ever. They should be two of your favorite people ever. So go and check that out. And there's a new documentary on there that we're going to talk about towards the end of this. But but there's been huge news that has rocked the Scientology and ex-Scientology and just celebrity world, I suppose, which is that Leah Remini, who is the actress who I grew up watching on King of Queens um, with the guy, I can't remember his name. What was his Kevin name? James. Kevin, Kevin James. James. It was a lot of fun, that show. I really enjoyed it. She is suing Scientology. People have pushed her for years to do this and it's finally happening Claire, um, you're an ex-Scientologist. You were very high up at the time. And uh, what what are your... Well, I suppose actually first, tell us what's actually going on. What's she, what's she suing for? Yes. Well, essentially, um, you know, there's, there's obviously many facets to the lawsuit. But in summary, um, Scientology has been harassing Leah, uh, as well as many other people for that matter, um, for more than a decade at this point. Um, just using tax exempt dollars to relentlessly try and destroy and shut her down and silence her. Um, Leah, as we all know, has become an advocate for survivors of Scientology and, um, and Scientology has gone after her over and over and over again. And this is um, the first real put your foot down and say, no, stop it. This is not okay. How can this be happening in an alleged free world? Why do you think it's now? Why is it? Because she's been campaigning for quite some time against Scientology. If anyone who follows her Twitter, she's always you know outraged by what Scientology is up to. What's happened now to make her do this? Well, I think, you know, it's just gotten to the point of the last straw, you know, um, obviously we all, we all saw the harassment and campaigns during the airing of the, uh, Leah Remini Scientology in the Aftermath documentary. Um, then, uh, Leah and Mike Rinder started the Fair Game podcast to share st stories of Scientology abuses. And, um, and that ran for, I think, about 80 episodes. Um, and non throughout that, throughout the entire process of airing that podcast, Scientology was harassing the production company and going after them and going after the advertisers and just on and on and on. And um, so then, so that they switched to a different platform, had a different contract than the same there that went on. And I think, um, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things. Um, you have to be a really strong person to be willing to stand up to this, this level of corporate bullying. Um, that is just, I mean, it, it's always to me felt like a David and Goliath situation. <laughs> you know, Mark and I were just us back in 2009 when we decided to file a lawsuit with the one little lawyer and I was driving down to the judge's chambers delivering papers myself. I mean, you know, we had not a chance in the world, but yet it's the right thing to do to stand up and say no. And in, in Leah's case, she has very strong document uh, you know, documentation that they have shut down several contracts, so, you know, over and over and over. And that's what you have to be able to prove in a court of law in a case like this. And undoubtedly, Leah has volumes of evidence of this. Shall I, um, to prove I'm a proper YouTuber, shall I get her statement up on the screen and see if this works? Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, I think it's, I think it's worked. Can you see it, Claire, on your side? I cannot. Okay, I will read it out then. I think but I can see that other people, I hope, can see it. Well, well I, I'll read it out anyway. After 17, this is Leah, after 17 years of harassment, intimidation, surveillance and defamation, I'm filing a lawsuit against Scientology and David Miscavige. While advocating for victims of Scientology has significantly impacted my life and career, Scientology's ultimate objective of silencing me has not been achieved. Although the lawsuit is about what Scientology has done to me, 
I am one of thousands of targets of Scientology over the past seven decades. People who share their experiences in Scientology and those who tell their stories and advocate for them should be free to do so without fearing retaliation from a tax-exempt cult with billions in assets. The press has a right to report about Scientology without facing a sophisticated intelligence operation from Scientology that could destroy their personal lives and careers. Law enforcement authorities have a right to investigate crimes in Scientology without fearing job loss. Children, mothers, fathers, Fathers, aunts and uncles have a right to request welfare checks on their family members without fear of an operation activated against them by Scientology for doing so. Those in the entertainment business should have a right to tell jokes and stories without facing an operation from Scientology that uses its resources in Hollywood to destroy their lives and careers. With this lawsuit, I hope to protect the rights afforded to them and me by the Constitution of the United States um, to speak the truth and report the facts about Scientology without fear of vicious and vindictive retribution against which most have no way to fight back. That suggests to me, reading that, um, Claire, that a lot of this particular lawsuit is going to be about uh, maybe f fair gaming, do you think? It's sort of the way that they go oh. after the press and the police and everything. Very definitely. Um, and it ties into every aspect of it because the goal of fair game of which there are thousands of policies and writings by l ron hubbard the founder of scientology that describe in detail that if someone speaks publicly about scientology scientology's goal becomes to muzzle that person silence them completely destroy their lives find means, uh, find things that are important to that person, go after them relentlessly. I mean, it is absolutely a targeted, vicious, intentional attack to shut that person down. And and yes, as, as Leah describes in her statement, this has been going on for seven decades. Let's not forget Scientology was responsible for the largest infiltration of the US government in its history. This is what they do. They are, it's, you know, to the letter, they have it outlined step by step this is what they do to anybody and everybody. It's not only me, an ex-Scientologist, it's anybody. A celebrity makes a joke and they are now a target. They are being, being sought, sought after and shut down and targeted and so forth. It's yeah. insane. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I no longer, since I started covering Scientology, I no longer say which city I live in in, in the UK because I am fearful of this, especially since Aaron told me it's likely that they'll, OSA, the off, was it Office of Special Affairs? Is that right? Yes. That they'll be, Office they'll of be Special checking. Affairs, the, the, the dirty tricks organization within Scientology. That's it. And uh, they'll be checking like planes that leave airports in the UK and in, in the US to see like all of our names and where we might be and where we're going, which is very scary when you've got a family and things like that. These people are after you. And the documentary we're going to talk about later that's on your channel at the moment, I was watching before, and you just see your husband, Mark, suddenly there's people around and he's going, God, are they checking up on us? And we're checking them as they check us and we check each other. And it's very scary. I suppose in recent memory, this, the most egregious case of, of fair gaming which again is a, is a, a word they they claim doesn't exist that they don't use in terms of getting back at people and stuff uh was the alleged well poisoning of you know what happened to the animals or pets of people who complained against danny masterson the actor from that 70s show who's gone down now for i think 30 years or something i mean that i mean are, are you just constantly on the lookout for this kind of thing yes absolutely um Mark, my husband, starts speaking out against Scientology before I did. I was still honestly terrified from having spent my the first 30 years of my life growing up in Scientology and having worked very close to the top. There was no question to me the lengths that Scientology would go to. Um, <clears throat> like, for example, when Mark wrote his book, Blown for Good, Behind the Iron Curtain of Scientology in 2009, it's like I support you. You know, we each go through our process in recovering from a high control um, organization like this, and many decades of extreme indoctrination. Nonetheless, I was terrified and insisted that we both have wills, that we had it documented how our children, if it, God forbid anything happened to us, that Scientology would never be able to have any access to our children or our assets. I mean 
for real, you know, just honestly, I'm, I consider myself fairly practical and reasonable. And that seemed like absolutely a, a normal, uh, important thing to do as part of just simply telling our story and releasing a book about Scientology. And you would know because you were in that cult. And so, you know, people need to believe you when you speak about this, you know, firsthand how dangerous it can be. But does, yes. does Leah stand a, a real chance of winning this suit? And what does that what does that actually mean? Is it a, it's a civil suit, isn't it? I think. Yes, it's a civil lawsuit. And his, so let's just talk for a minute. In the last, uh, I think since 2014, um, Scientology has hired multi-million dollar law firms to invent this um, strategy of quote arbitration unquote and and it, so in the last nine years Scientology has somewhat successfully to date been using arbitration as a means to divert lawsuits out of the U.S. court system because um, historically they they have not won lawsuits in the U.S. court system. So therefore, you know, what better strategy than to come up with an invention and a fabrication of, oh, we have this arbitration policy. Let me tell you, there is no such thing as arbitration in Scientology. There's nothing. Uh, you know, Hubbard has written thousands and thousands and thousands of policies. There's not a one that talks about arbitration. It's completely a fabrication by lawyers to add this layer of protection of Scientology because Scientology knows that in a court of law, in front of a jury, they will 100% lose. Um, and so as I was mentioning to you just um, before we went live, Mark and I just participated in um, a program with 60 Minutes Australia that will be airing on Sunday um, in which we talk about this um, fabrication uh, of arbitration. And um, I just hope that judges and the legal system start paying attention and doing their research to realize that you cannot send a person back to their abuser. That's that's what the process of arbitration does. Like take the case of Valerie Haney. She escaped from their headquarters in California in the trunk of a car. And now she has a pending lawsuit and, and the, the judge has said, oh no, go back and do an arbitration. Go back to your abuser. Go back to the person you wow. escaped from in the trunk of a car. Yeah, I, it's absolutely insane. <laughs> so, you know, you just go, uh, th th this is going to come to an end. It has to because Scientology cannot get away with this. It is absolutely loony bin. Um, and, you know, any one of us who was in Scientology can attest to the fact that this is not a thing. Even in the example of my lawsuit, uh, you know, M Mark and I had a lawsuit pending from 2009 to 2012, which was before this invention of arbitration. Arbitration did not even, did not play in at all which just further proves and documents that this is a legal strategy that they've created to avoid justice. So anyway, we'll see how this all plays out, but they're not going to continue to get away with this. Just to make sure I've understood that then, from just I'm, I'm, I'm about as lay person as, as a proper journalist should ever be. I mean, as far to the, the lay side as you can get. So arbitrate this what's happening then is they're sort of saying don't worry judges everyone this doesn't have to go to court because we've got our own system arbitration so don't worry and and the, the courts are often just going yeah fine okay you guys handle this between yourselves yes that's right they're saying we will form a you know a a, a court of arbitration of scientologists <laughs> and again you just go oh what so that's going to be fair <laughs> it's not even it's not even somebody that's not involved it's a scient an arbitration is alleged to be made up of um, a group of scientologists in good standing why on earth would valerie haney who escaped in the trunk of a car need to go talk to some scientologists what in the world is going on? <laughs> it's just completely bonkers. And, and it winds me up because obviously I cover a lot of cults on, on this channel and extreme religions and things. And it's something we see time and time again, that people go to the courts in the States, in the UK, and the courts are just like, well, go sort this this out amongst yourselves. I mean, I was just 
my latest episodes with Javi Weisberger, a former Hasidic Jewish woman who who couldn't get hold of her kids because she went to court and the court just said like, well, go and sort this out amongst yourselves and the kids should stay in the group they're already in, which was this extreme wow. group. And that, yeah, it's the kind of thing that happens. Absolutely yeah. mad. Um, I should read out a bit more about the lawsuit news. I've just pulled that up on screen. Um, and this is also on Leah Remini's on her website. Uh, but it's, I guess it's an article or something that she's she's put out, or maybe it's for for the press to to use. Leah Remini files lawsuit against Church of Scientology. Second uh, of August. This was yesterday. Um, today, actress, producer, author, and advocate Leah Remini filed a lawsuit in the California Superior Court in an attempt to end what she alleges are mob-style operations and attacks on her and other alleged victims and survivors of the Church of Scientology and their advocates. The lawsuit seeks to require Scientology and any entity it controls and funds to cease and desist its alleged practice of harassment, defamation, and other unlawful conduct against anyone who Scientology has labelled as an enemy. It also requests compensatory and punitive damages to compensate Remini for the harm she alleges Scientology has inflicted on her and her career. Named defendants are the Church of Scientology International, Inc., Scientology's leader David Miscavige, and Religious Technology Centre, Inc., which the complaint alleges manages policing operations and principally enforces Scientology's punishment orders. So, and I'll go into this more that I'll go into a bit later. That's really interesting, obviously, that David Miscavige is named, and also that it's a, it's mentioning Leah Remini's career. I mean, because as far as I know, I've not seen her in anything apart from King of Queens. And I guess she's sort of seen as that Scientology person now. And I can see how when the biggest grossing film or one of the biggest is Mission Impossible year after year, it's all the Tom Cruise vehicles, that Hollywood might fear employing Leah Remini, who's clearly a very talented actress. What do you think yes. about that? Because she can't get a job, can she, if, with all this going on? Well, she's been the hostess of The People Puzzler more recently. And I think that's also covered in the lawsuit that um, it's been very successful more recently. And um, I just saw, I, I'm in the middle of going through the many pages of the documents, but I think that season four that was supposed to already be contracted hasn't been, um, you know, it's, so you just know, oh, and, and another, another item that was covered in there was that there was going to be a documentary about Where is Shelley, um, which of course, you know, I've been doing um, the series Where is Shelley, interviewing people who know her personally. Um, and then that got shut down as well, apparently. So there's layer upon layer of um, harassment, intimidation, just, you know, uh, attempts at silencing, shutting down anything that will continue to shine this very bright light that Leah has spearheaded with the Aftermath show. Uh, there's no question in my mind that that Aftermath show completely changed the public perception of Scientology very effectively. Mark and I had participated in a number of documentaries prior to that. Um, but with Going Clear and then Leah Remini, Scientology in the Aftermath, it was on such a broad level and in, in such a relatable fashion. Like it, the, the crazy part is in Scientology, there's nothing to, you know, make dramatic or, you know, embellish or anything like it's not just just tell the stories of real people. And that's what um, the documentary accomplished in three seasons and why it won awards and, you know, um, and made it that the general, the public in general knew about Scientology on a level that had never been known before, you know, and on a, uh, with detailed specific stories that elaborated Scientology's abuses and destruction of families and disconnection and on and on and on. For those who are just joining us, well, firstly, make sure to hit the like button because it helps this video to spread out to, to the masses so more people can hear about this stuff. But also you mentioned, of course, where is Shelley Miscavige? And that's going to be on your Blown for Good amazing channel that people should check out. Just but for a brief overview, overview of that uh, or, or a little diversion, I suppose, I think a lot of people who don't know about that might think the implication is that, you know, she she might not be alive or something. But I think we we do think we know where she is, right? Yes, we believe, at least to the last of our knowledge, um, which is 
pretty recent that she Shelly Miscavige, David Miscavige's wife, is being held at a very secure secret compound in Running Springs, California, known as CST, which stands for Church of Spiritual Technology. Um, and the reason she'd be held at that compound is to keep her out of the public eye. Um, to my knowledge, she has at least eight people whose sole task is to keep her there, including three handlers, uh, three women that sh that have been with her in this isolation. And then on top of that, multiple security guards, security guards inside the compound, security guards outside of the compound. And the bottom line is that Shelly Miscavige represents a threat to David Miscavige in that A, she's witnessed many different abuses. B, uh, she's witnessed any crimes he's committed, she witnessed until 18 years ago when she was vanished from public, vanished from her family. No one in her family has heard from her. Um, so yes, it's it's a logical chain of thought to, th to think, well, is she even still with us? Um, but the thing is, is that having been in that world, I know that most likely she is being held captive and obviously she hasn't been brought out by David Miscavige to say, no, I'm okay. And so therefore, if it were me, I would just hope that somebody would care to keep asking the question to possibly hope for freedom one day. And that's, you know, I worked very, very closely with, with Shelly for eight years. There's no question in my mind that she's <clears throat> very indoctrinated. She's very loyal to L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology. But 18 years of captivity can cause somebody to question a lot of what they've thought their whole life. Um, and so Shelley deserves to have people care enough to keep asking, where is she? Mm, absolutely right. Absolutely. And I think you were telling me last time that she disappeared just at the time that David Miscavige was getting a bit closer with his uh, secretary, was it? Yes, Larice Stukenbrock. Yeah, mm, so, so there, there are absolutely yeah. presumptions that, um, and you know, I didn't witness any of that personally, but I've heard from people that that did witness and trust that very likely um, there's, uh, you know, that she, that's that likely that's part of why Shelley was removed off the lines. But more importantly, also Shelley Miscavige has authority and um, is very respected by many of the executives within Scientology. Mm -hmm. She worked with L. Ron Hubbard from the age of 11 or 12 years old, very closely, which David Miscavige did not. Um, so, <laughs> you know, if, if there were to be any kind of attempt to remove David Miscavige as the authoritarian figure within the Church of Scientology, Shelley Miscavige would be a very logical choice, unless, of course, she'd been put in, ca in captivity for 18 years. Yeah. The, oh my word it's just abs the whole thing's absolutely mad um i'm also looking at some some questions for us um and it, and it's a good point here from um well good question i suppose from anna Philaxis, who says claire do you think that you'll be called to testify in leah's case obviously there's some history there the context that you were called to danny masterson's trial in california recently uh again just in case anyone doesn't know that's the actor from that 70 show who's accused of doing heinous things to um other Scientologists about 20 years ago. He's now gone away for 30 years. Uh, is there any chance that you'd be called for this one? You know, I don't know. We'll see what happens and see how it plays out. But I will um, always consider it my responsibility to shine a light on the abusive practices of Scientology. So if I were called to testify, I certainly would. Mm, absolutely. That'd be great if you, if, you, if you did. Are you are you close with Leah? Do you know Leah? Does everyone know each other? Oh, yeah, of course. Leah is a very, very dear friend of mine. Absolutely. Oh, that's nice. There's a question. Oh, go on. Were you going to say more? Yeah, no, I was just going to say um, Leah's work behind the scenes as an advocate for the victims of Scientology is um, unparalleled, um, you know, and just as I don't get paid to do any of this, neither does Leah get paid to do any of the work that she does. And, and yet we know it's the right thing to do. And, um, you know, Leah, as you said, has, ha has a very successful career. She easily could have just walked away and done nothing like others have done. And yet, uh, when you've grown up in this, in this destructive cult, as Leah did, um, you know, what's if we don't if we don't speak up then who's going to 
And this, are we going to, is it okay with us that this continue? Absolutely not. Absolutely. And she's someone that, you know, for, for, I've never met her, but I've got a lot of respect for her. Um, and I think she, her comedic timing and everything is just wonderful. I, I just, I'm a huge fan. So, and, and the yes. way that she's been, you know, doing what you guys are doing as well. It's just inspiring. It really is. Because I think a lot of Hollywood people might just sort of wash the hands of it. She could get probably more work if she didn't talk about this stuff. I, I have no idea what her ambitions are, if she even wants that. But, you know, it's always going to affect her career, as the lawsuit says itself. So she is really sacrificing uh, her own career for for this. There's a question here from um, Alison uh, and. Antonio, apologies because I see it so small on my little teleprompter, but I think it's Alison. I would, I would guess Alison Antonio. I can't see it. I don't see it on my end, as I mentioned to you, but that, that's my guess on pronunciation Alison for you. Alison Antonio. <laughs> there you go. I wonder if Leah's daughter is, I, I didn't even know she has a daughter, is worried now that her mum is suing. Why, why, why might, might that be just fair, the fair game? Yes. Um, so, so Leah has a daughter, Sophia, who is an amazing person. She's she she knows what's going on as many young people these days do uh which is also inspiring because it just helps to know that you know the young people of today see what's going on and will not get sucked into this and will just you know go on the internet and get the true scoop so um i'm i'm not sure i don't know specifically how she feels about it but i know that uh leah is an amazing mother and will absolutely protect her do you think these lawsuits? So there's there's that other one um, that that big suit at the moment. Now there's now there's this new Leah Remini one that's going to happen. I mean, are these going to help to eventually bring Scientology to its knees? I think everything helps. Every voice counts. Every action helps. You know, the more law enforcement are educated on the the abusive practices of Scientology, the way they use their policies to destroy people, every single piece of it matters and counts, and and will have an impact. You know, I, can I say what the end game is? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, but this is not about belief. This is about an abusive, corrupt organization. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm going to continue reading a bit more of the statement um, that we've got here. Um, For 17 years, Scientology and David Miscavige have subjected me, this is Leah Remini, by the way, to what I believe to be psychological torture, defamation, surveillance, harassment. Oh, I did that bit earlier. That's in the second bit as well. She's put that in the brief. That's for newspapers. Uh, the complaint concerns alleged actions of the Office of Special Affairs, OSA, that we spoke about, formerly known as the Guardian's Office, including monitoring the activities of Scientologists and non-Scientologists and exacting revenge and retribution on anyone who has been declared an enemy of Scientology. According to the complaint, OSA Network orders a series of directives from Scientology's founder, the late L. Ron Hubbard, institutionalized a series of retaliatory actions to be taken against any individual, organization, business or government government entity that Scientology declares as an enemy. Under the organization's rules, directives originating from Hubbard cannot be changed. This complaint alleges that attacks on Remini were activated by OSA and the operatives under Hubbard's OSA network orders meant to totally restrain and muzzle, obliterate and ruin utterly her and demonstrate a pattern and practice of harassment defamation and abuse. And we had another comment earlier that I just I favorited because I knew you'd have I think quite a, an insider response to this. Um and it relates to what Leah's describing um in that brief to the press. It's from Mama Cat and they and who says they weren't able this is about Scientology to stop the creators of South Park. I do wonder if they tried and I believe they did, didn't they? Oh yes, no, they definitely did. So also on the Blown for Good, our Blown for Good YouTube channel, uh, my husband Mark has been doing a series called The Spy Files um, <clears throat> in which we have been, um, he's been exposing internal Scientology memos that we were able to get our hands on. There's actually upwards of 5,000 documents in these files. Um, and the, um, the many attempts that they use to try to infiltrate the South Park creators, like e they even had people going under, going in under false pretenses to try and gather intel on um, Trey and Matt, like even, you know, anyway, it's in great detail, but yes, they absolutely went after South Park full on hardcore, just as they do with many others. And in the spy files, Mark has been exposing many of the different 
activities, nefarious, illegal, and otherwise that Scientology engages in to target their enemies. For example, there's documents in there that describe how they have our phone records. You know, these are they these run through 2007. So it's like 1995 to 2007, these, these many documents, um, but they have illegal uh, trash collection. They call it D-line where they get, they would buy the trash from somebody's house to go through it and dig through it and try and get Intel, or they'll send in, you know, business contacts under false pretenses to try and get access to information on the person's livelihood. Um, I mean, it's insane and it goes on and on and on. And it's, it's very, uh, targeted and intentional in terms of destroying somebody. I've got a question from Jeff. Hypothetically, if Leah wins, do you think this will open the floodgates for others to come forward and possibly for others to refile past suits that uh, church now that now that church mitigation or uh, arbitration is off the table? I would absolutely hope so. And I hope that, you know, with every voice, every person that speaks up, there are going to be 10 or even 100 more victims that will hopefully feel empowered and enabled to step up, go to law enforcement, you know, go to attorneys, um, take action, do not let this, this abusive organization continue to get away with these crimes. Yeah. No, absolutely right. I hope it does make a lot of pe more people come forward. Um, there's a question from, I mean, I've, I'm trying to find it again. What happened, we were talking about Shelley Miscavige before, Cindy Ten Hagen says, what happened to Shelley and David's daughter? Is she missing too? Do they have a daughter? No, they do not have any children. Ah, well, there you go. There you go. Yeah, uh, I've got another one. Rascal asks, was you in Scientology, Andrew? I was not. I have a channel that I talk a lot about uh, cults and extreme religions because I, uh, well, I was I was sort of, well, I was secular, but I was in Judaism. I was Jewish. I grew up. And I didn't really uh, enjoy it very much. I didn't like the, the more cultish elements on the extreme ends of it. So I started looking into all sorts of extreme and different things. And the Scientology stuff really just took off. And then I got in with this wonderful crowd of people like Aaron and Claire and Mark and, and, and Mike. How, how is Mike, by the way? Is there any update on Mike Rinder, who, who's um, unfortunately got cancer? He is doing his treatment and fighting the battles that need to be fought. I'm sure that um, Mike and his wife, Christy, will give an update soon. Um, there was an update they did a couple of weeks ago on Mike Rinder's YouTube channel. So I don't want to speak out of turn, but I know the battle is ongoing. Oh, well, we wish him the best of luck. All of us, you know, all of our thoughts are with him. Um, Absolutely. I get asked a lot. People, people say, you know, how's Mike? I don't, I don't know him personally, so I just have to know through, um, through you guys. Um, yes, so my, I, Mike and Christy people. are some of our closest friends. So whenever we're authorized to speak, <laughs> we will. <laughs> Uh, that's absolutely fair enough and you, you know I, I could you don't want to say the wrong thing or whatever because who knows what what they want to be said and and all these things it's very complicated when it comes to illness but we we wish him the very best of course um, absolutely so and we, and they know that was... they've absolutely felt a, the complete overwhelming outpouring of support and love and everything else and it means so much to them and is so greatly appreciated Oh, that's nice. That that is lovely. And and you know, I, I got some people saying, "Why haven't you done a video about it or something?" And I've said, you know, I've I've privately uh, been in touch with, with Mike at the, at the you know, and and I think it was appreciated. And I didn't, you know. Anyway, anyway, um, Sabrina Fair asks or says maybe Shelley will be called in Leah's case. Maybe if she is still alive, this will prove it. Has she been called before? I know like David Miscavige was called uh, and just didn't. They, they just sort of don't turn up, do they? People don't have. Do they have to turn up? Well, and so, and again, I'm, I'm no lawyer. I was born and raised in a cult, um, but <laughs> I know that um, in the, in, my understanding is in the U S court system, when someone is served, you know, obviously they're served a subpoena to appear and testify in a court case. Well, if the person can't be found, there is a process by which it's pretty extensive. But if you document that you've made every effort to serve the person by mail, by, you know, uh, you know, whatever the exact steps are, there is a way to prove to the court that you've gone above and beyond to 
serve the person so that, you know, obviously if they're avoiding being served and, and making sure that they cannot be physically served with this documentation, they can, the, the court can rule that they have been served by default. Right. I see. And then people are asking as well if, if, oh, actually I've got super chats here. What have I got? Uh, couple of super chats. Denver Stevio, uh, oh. thank you so much for your generosity. I can see Claire recognizes Denver Stevio. Denver Stevo, yep. yes, absolutely. A pillar of oh, the Steve SPTV o. community. He actually <laughs> lives, you know, in the state of Colorado and I will say I've met him personally. So there you go. Oh, well, that's lovely. Yes. Of course it's Stevo, isn't it? I've just, I've put the yes. EO at the end. I've gone, it would be Stevio or Stevo. <laughs> uh, well, Stevo says hearts to Claire, hearts to Leah, even hearts to Andrew. Have the edge hogs heard? The edge hogs is, is what uh, I call my, my on the edge uh, uh, viewers and listeners and things. Thank you very much, Steve. Oh, good to good to hear from you. And then yes. Margie M says, uh, and thank you, Margie, for your generosity and loveliness. Hi, Andrew. Great topic. I really like Leah. Do you think that she is likely to win? Well, I have no idea. Claire, do you know? And, and have people, a lot of people are asking as well in the chat, have people tried, I, I know you have done, to sue Scientology in the past? Are people ever successful? So it's a three-pronged question. Have they tried to sue Scientology in the past? Have they won often? And is Claire likely, is Leah likely to win? You are Claire. Is Leah likely to win? <laughs> so um, I have no, I don't have solid answers to any of that. Of, of course, I can speculate. The key next step is to um, shatter this this um, apparency that they've created of there being any process of arbitration. I believe we're close to pulling the rug out from under that so that courts and judges realize that that is a complete, uh, just flat out lie that's intending to divert um, lawsuits out of the court system. So once that's out of the way, which I believe is upcoming fairly shortly here, then we'll be in a much better position um, where the US court system is not forcing victims back to their abuser. With that out of the way, we can have a much better um, shot at uh, seeing justice be served. Oh, yeah, I hope it will be. Um, I mean, the only uh, the only thing is, so I've got I've just turned my microphone up a little bit, by the way, because people are saying mine's a bit low. Uh, Margaret Nielsen says uh, the channel Mitt lawyer. It must be my lawyer friend, my lawyer friend Zach Mitt, being with in German, so it must be my lawyer friend Zach says this case can take years. When you sued, did that take a long time? So these things take a long time. Yes, they absolutely take a long time. Mostly, uh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it drags on for five to 10 years. Unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast. And I've seen it happen many, many times. And the statement my husband, Mark, always makes that I think rings true is if you had billions of dollars, how much would you spend to protect yourself? That's what applies here to Scientology. Um, of course, they're going to fight this tooth and claw and drag it out endlessly. And and it's it's having lived through four years of that ourselves um, during our lawsuit. It is an incredibly tough process to go through, and it's definitely not for the faint of heart. You know, there's endless deposition, discovery, on and on and on. Um, so hats off to Leah for having the courage and um, tenacity to do this because it needs to be done. Um, you know, the problem is, is that there's always this there's a there's there's many cons <laughs> so yeah it's it's something she's really taken on she's really you know, this is the next few years of her life we're going to hear a lot about it uh, i've got gretch f saying your mic isn't low you're talking in a whisper and then Gretchen Gret oh. said that in capital letters. That's just my voice. It's just how I sound all English, which which Claire is sort of English as well. So she can yes. understand that, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks for thanks for telling me that. Last time I tried to go, no, last time I came into England to visit a friend. Oh my gosh, I got the stink eye from the security agents. Let me tell you, they were like, why do you have a British passport? <laughs> <laughs> you should have put on put on the old uh, the old Manchester. Was it Manchester you were from? A family from? I was, yeah, I was born in Manchester, but I only lived there until I was four years old. And then my mother joined mm. the Sea Organization and we moved to West Sussex. So I actually had a different British accent than my mother had. Um, but yeah, no, we were, we went to visit a friend and, and he was, he had told us he lived in London. And so the officer said, well, where are you going to be staying? And I, we were like, 
Cobham. He's like, that's not London. <laughs> <laughs> that West Sussex album um, accent would have sounded um, somewhat like mine, actually. We would, ha- we would have had, you know, in a different life, similar accents, and now we don't. And uh, yeah, yes. so there you go. <laughs> yes, and it's um, it's funny because obviously Kelly Copter is from Manchester as well. So I've had that oh, yeah, same conversation with her. Had I grown up in Manchester, I would have had the same accent as Kelly. <laughs> oh, she is she is such a beautiful soul, and she's edited that documentary, which we're going to get onto in a minute. We've got to get onto that, but she's she's just a yes. oh, she's so talented, so much, so many things. She does Kelly Copter, fantastic channel. People should check that out as well. Um, and also, by the way, I realized halfway through this, a lot of people in the comments were going, "Oh, I've just come here from Aaron." Uh, live so he had just finished um, so we oh. should give him a mention as well I'm giving everyone loads yes. of homework today it's Kelly Copter <laughs> and Growing Up in Scientology and uh, Blown for Good are the three these three channels go and check them out subscribe to them and help them because these are people who are um, you know bringing down Scientology and doing lots of amazing, amazing work. Um, we've got another super chat. Thank you from Snow One, to Snow167. Is there a chance David Miscavige will run to a country without extradition uh, treaties with the US with all the lawsuits? I suppose that's possible, isn't it? Yep, anything's possible. And, and that's the unfortunate fact. Um, you know, the, if you look at the trajectory of abuse within Scientology. I I know personally it is worsening. And that's what just, it, you know, makes me even that more passionate to keep shining this light. It has to stop. And it can't, it, it just cannot keep getting worse. I, I have, you know, even just recently learned of things that just are so scary. And when these things see the light of day, um, anyway, so we'll, we're going to keep on keeping on here. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I've got a, a question from Creepy B Five, who says, "Oh, Creepy B Five. Uh, that that name's familiar." <laughs> Creepy V5 is always here and always saying really, really positive things, actually. For somebody whose name is Creepy, they're extremely <laughs> positive. And Creepy says, is it past the point where Scientology can do the harassment to the levels that they are used to? Are they? And I don't want to sort of uh, jinx, or, jinx it or sort of push them into, oh, right, well, we better step up our game. But is there less fair gaming going on? Uh, so yeah, that's hard to comment on, you know, if you consider that the beast is getting cornered and caged uh, with each voice that speaks out and with each action that is taken, um, the unpredict, the, there's a a factor of unpredictability, unfortunately. So, um, you know, yes, the, the, the light only gets brighter, what they're going to do in response to that remains to be seen, but that's why we are working rigorously and vigilantly behind the scenes to establish firm lines with law enforcement who we can trust and who understand what we're dealing with here so that we can all be uh, just act appropriately with what we're dealing with here. Tell us about the wonderful new documentary, which I believe was edited by Kelly Copter, that's on Bone yes. for Good at the moment that I watched today and was really, really uh, something special. Yes. Very definitely. So it's on Blown for Good as well as Growing Up in Scientology. It premiered on both channels. This is uh, the Aftermath Foundation presents the story of Serge Obolensky. And to back up for a minute, the Aftermath Foundation was uh, formed in December 2017 with the purpose to help people escaping from Scientology and the C organization to not only escape but to get it back on their feet in the outside world, because many such people lack a system of support in order to do so. Oftentimes when you're in the C organization, you're isolated to such an extreme level. You have no contact even with your family members outside outside Scientology. Any members within Scientology will just turn you back in. So the Aftermath Foundation serves a very important um, purpose in helping people get out of Scientology. And we've done so many, many times now. Um, I served as the treasurer for the first five years. I'm now the president of the foundation. Aaron is the vice president. Um, My husband, Mark, is on the board of um, directors. Um, We are all volunteer. It's not paid. This is our passion to help people get out. Um, And the Surge documentary is 
the first in, in what, what is going to be a series of survivor stories in which the Aftermath Foundation will tell the stories of those people we have helped. Um, I, sh I should note that help from the foundation does not require a commitment to speak out because many people often have to recover and they have to be okay. So it's not a requirement, um, but if a person wants to share their story, then we will be very glad to do so because these survivor stories 201 are going to be just incredibly powerful. And so specifically, this first one is the story of Serge Obolensky, who grew up in Scientology from the age of approximately three. He joined the SEER organization when he was 11 years old. Um, he was put on the Rehabilitation Project Force, which is essentially their slave camp reprogramming um, attempt when he was approximately 14 years old. When he was 19 years old, living on L. Ron Hubbard Way in Los Angeles, he had a terrible accident. He was building fireworks. He blew off his two hands and lost an eye. And Scientology promptly kicked him out. Um, his family disconnected from him. And Serge ended up being homeless on Hollywood Boulevard, right under Scientology's nose for 10 years. It's absolutely a devastating story. Um, Serge is an incredible person. The path he's been on recovering from all this, uh, he he has a resilience like no one you've ever seen. It's such an, uh, an inspirational story of overcoming incredible odds and coming out the other side with such compassion, such empathy. And so from the Aftermath Foundation, we've had honestly the privilege and honor to be able to help him in his path to recovery. We've been working with him very closely for the last two, two or so years. Um, we helped him get new prosthetic hooks, uh, a new prosthetic oh. eye. Um, he, he just recently graduated and attained his GED. Um, just an incredible story and yes as you said shout out to the magnificent and talented kelly copter she did an incredible job putting this documentary together and it really does um the story of sergio belensky shines a light on scientology's practices when it comes to people with disabilities like nothing you've ever seen so mm. please go and watch serge's story you will be crying. Yeah. Bring your tissues. I, I still, I, I, I've known and worked with Serge for three years. Uh, I know his story. You know, I've personally managed many, many of his doctor's appointments and tutoring and you name it. Uh, and every single time I watch this documentary, I turn into just a sobbing mess. I cannot help it. <laughs> I feel you're emotional just talking about it. Yes. Yeah, it's it's incredible. And like I said, it's been it's an honor and a privilege to do the work that the Aftermath Foundation does as people uh, who have lived through all this. We can relate like obviously no, not many people can on a very personal level. So uh, we understand what people are faced with when trying to leave Scientology. And that's um, that's why we have this foundation. And that's why we are working every day to accomplish our purpose. I've got questions again people just asking where is the surge doc is it on netflix it is on both the channels blown for good and growing up in scientology uh, i know you guys like to to help i mean the, the viewers i mean you like to help out and all that i would suggest opening it in both uh, that's what I did and letting them, even if you don't get time, I always do this. I let it play out the whole way because then YouTube suggests it to more and more people. You want more people to watch it. Um, but that's, so that's what I do and let them all play out. So I would, that's what, that way I don't have to choose between my friends, between Claire and Aaron. You can, <laughs> you can watch, uh, on both those channels. That's, that's probably the best idea. How, how is Serge, um, doing now? Is he all right? He, yes, he is doing great. Um, he is working to get a part-time job. He's, he's, he's just doing incredibly well and it was the he's been reading the comments too from um the response to this documentary he's been very very touched um we've had at least four or five people reach out who knew him and grew up with him and we've been able mm -hmm. to reconnect those people with surge which he has really really enjoyed um so he is an amazing survivor quite the story and yes like you said and actually i should comment that on both the channels, Growing Up in Scientology and Blown for Good, where you can watch the story of Sergio Belensky. Um, both are fundraisers, so the proceeds from everything to do with this will go back to the Aftermath Foundation, and we've had just an, an absolute incredible response.
Mm. It has been absolutely mad, and I'm always, I'm never, I'm always torn between sort of, oh, do I want to mention the the number because then it feels like, oh god, that's quite, that's quite high. I don't need to help. But then if it's if it's a low number, which it's not, people might think, oh, there's no point anyway. It doesn't help. The numbers are like. I guess I don't know. I don't know how much like a lot of money is to a lot to other people. But to me, I'm looking at it going bloody hell. Like people are so generous, and they're giving like it's a significant amount to both channels. That's going to help a lot of people. Yes, absolutely. It's incredible. And um, you know, as I said, we from the Aftermath Foundation, the um, scope of support that we provide to people leaving Scientology is pretty broad. Like I personally have. I taught Catherine Olson, for example, let's talk a specific. We we got Catherine Olson out from this organization. I taught her to drive personally. She stayed in our house. Oh. We helped her get a car. <laughs> you know, it's it's real and it's actual. And it we're, you know, the point of these documentaries that we're now doing through the Aftermath Foundation is to promote the good work we do. And that, and again, to reiterate none of us are paid we don't we do not pay salaries to anybody we're very proud of that fact we would never do it for that um and go ahead scientology look at our financials this is not about money this is about <laughs> helping people rebuild their lives and and um anyway so we're just very glad to get the word out spread the word um uh, the uh foundation website is www.theaftermathfoundation.org theaftermathfoundation.org uh we're redoing it right now so we'll splatter it everywhere once it's beautifully redone uh which is we're at the tail end of, but yes, uh, we're very proud of the work that we do. I'm going to put that link down below after as soon as we're done with this. Um, I've got a super chat. Thank you very much for, to Lisa Gillespie or Gillespie. Never sure about that one, but thank you so much for your help. I'm a huge supporter of all your efforts to bring COS, Church of Scientology, to justice. I'm very moved by your tenacity. I subscribe to all your channels and watch daily. Well, thank you from all of us, Lisa. You, yes, you thank there? you, Lisa. We appreciate it. <laughs> oh, it's very, it's very, very nice. Um, what is the official line from Scientology on, on disabilities? Um, Scientology exists to make the able more able. Uh, so that's it. That's where the, the story ends. Uh, you will not see people in, um, Scientology orgs, unfortunately with disabilities, they can, L. Ron Hubbard says that someone born with a disability is what they refer to as a degraded being, meaning that they've, this person has committed alleged crimes. I mean, it's literally hate rhetoric in a level like nothing else. They've committed crimes in a previous lifetime that made them pull this in this, that they deserve it as a, wow. anyway, yeah, we won't even go there because it's there. <laughs> unconditional love, empathy, compassion. These are things that do not exist in Scientology. There's a former England soccer or football manager who lost his job um, um, about 20 years ago for uh, adhering to that belief system. Actually, he wasn't he wasn't a Scientologist, but he thought that as well. And uh, he was recorded by a journalist and he lost his job and, you know, caused a whole furore or whatever. But I mean, look, those are the kinds of things people need to be asking Tom Cruise, I think, um, at his next press mm -hmm. conference when everyone's joking and laughing with him about the next big stunts he's done in Hollywood and all this stuff. They need to be asking those things. Um, Claire, You've been, as always, absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on. People, please do, you know, you know the drill. You know the drill. Go and watch the Surge documentary on Blown for Good. Find the Spy Files as well. We talked about that. That's to do with uh, the fair gaming and all that stuff. Do support Leah Remini on Twitter and all of those things. Make sure you're following her. Sci growing up in Scientology, the whole list of things to do. Growing up in Scientology, Aaron's <laughs> channel, Kelly Copter, because she edited the, the documentary. She's brilliant. Please hit the like button. As for me, I'm about to do another live because Dan Wooten, who is not potentially that well-known in America, but he's a big journalist here, there's been proof of a, a scandal that he was involved in. Um, it's finally out all today, so I'm going to go on about that because he's done some awful, awful, horrible things, apparently. Um, yeah, and keep keep on watching our channels. Thank you. Claire, any last, uh, any last words? No, just thank you for everything you do, Andrew. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Always a pleasure speaking with you, so I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay.